In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do a quick and dirty vocal mix. Hey, this is Joe from Home Studio Corner, where I've been helping people make better music in home studios since 2009. What? The first question you probably have is why? Joe, why should I care how to do a quick and dirty vocal? I'll tell you, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, if you have a vocalist coming to your studio to record, or if you are the singer. First I was afraid. Either way, us singers are a bit of a narcissistic group and we like to hear ourselves. So it won't be uncommon for you to hear from the vocalist, can I get a mix of that to listen to on the way home? So you wanna be able to provide with them a quick, rough mix. And arguably the most important thing in that rough mix is gonna be the vocal. If the vocal is completely raw and unprocessed, there's a chance, especially if it's an inexperienced singer, that they're gonna hear that and think, this doesn't sound anything like what I hear on the radio. And they start to doubt themselves as a singer, start to doubt you as an engineer, and it just casts a pall on the whole experience. And you don't want a pall. But it's only a rough mix. So you don't wanna spend an hour perfectly tweaking the vocal when it's really just meant to be a quick and dirty rough mix. There are also a couple of side benefits from doing this. It helps you practice your mixing skills better. Maybe you're wanting to try a new compressor or a new EQ or a new technique for mixing vocals and you're not quite ready to use it on a proper mix. Quick and dirty vocal mixes are a great place to experiment and try things out without really risking anything. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let me show you my approach to a quick and dirty vocal. Now. This is just one approach. It may not work for you, it might not work for every genre, but if you're doing rock, folk, indie stuff, and possibly even some pop, this can work really well. I've got a vocal queued up, let's listen to the raw vocal. I think that I could have saved it if only I had enough time. First thing I like to do right out of the gate is compress that sucker. Now, unless there's some major issue that needs to be EQ'd, I like to start with compression. Now, this vocal has a lot of low end, but I'm okay with that. I like the way the low end interacts with the compressor. As long as it's not way too much, it actually triggers that compressor in a way that keeps things feeling warm. Whereas if we remove the low end and then compressed, it sometimes can get a little harsh and nobody wants harsh. I think that I I think that I could have saved it if only I had enough time. I think that I could have saved it if only I had enough time. Just a few simple words would have thrown it all back in line. Now what I'm listening to there is mostly, to be honest, the sibilance. So the S's, the T's, the K's, the F's, how are they responding? If you go listen to any major label release of a lead vocal, you're gonna hear compression. Compression is kind of the sound of a lead vocal track, so it needs to be there. And the places where I tend to hear it is on those consonants. It doesn't sound natural. The F's and the T's and the K and the F and the S are all accentuated, but in a way, that kind of works. I think that I could have said. Get those consonants nice and clear so that it sits on top of the mix without much effort. Now the next thing we need to do is EQ. I like to think of EQ in two ways. Take away bad stuff, add good stuff. On initial listening of this, it's a little dark. I need to remove some low end and then possibly add some high end and maybe take out a little mid range. Let's find out. I think that I could have saved it if only I had enough time. Just a few simple words would have thrown it all back in line. And then some I think that I could have saved it if only I had enough time. Just a few simple words would have thrown it all back in line. And then some well-meaning soul says it's all, all for our good. I think that I could have saved it if only I had enough time. Okay, that feels good. There's no more of that whoa, 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 low end to the vocal, and we've kind of tamed the mid-range a little bit. It's a little crispy in the top end due to the amount of compression that we used, so I'm gonna add a de-esser to tame that 
intense stuff that's happening up top. When I say de -esser, I actually don't have a de -esser, so I'm using a compressor that's only listening to the high frequencies using the internal sidechain filter. I've got a video on that. I'll link to it below if you want more explanation on that. Saved it if only I had enough time. I think that I could have saved it if only I had enough time. Just I think that I could have saved it if only you simple words would have thrown it all back in line. Now that we've done that, we've tamed those sharp sibilant points that aren't chopping our face off anymore, I'm gonna go back to the EQ and maybe add just a little bit of top end to bring a little more clarity and airiness to the vocal. You simple words would have thrown it all back in line. You simple words would have thrown it all back in line. You simple words would have thrown it all back in line. I think that I could have saved it if only I had enough time. And that's it. You can stop there. If you're like me, though, and you want to add a little extra something, I like to add, probably more often than I should, a slapback slap delay. delay. Now, reverb can work well too, but I love the vibey sound of a quick slapback delay set to something like 100 to 120 milliseconds. It just adds that little vibe to it that I love. I think that I could have saved it if only I had enough time. Just a few simple words would have thrown it all back in line. And then some well-meaning soul says it's all, all for our good. I think that I could have saved it if only I had enough time. Just a few simple words would have thrown it all back in line. Little quick note, you noticed how I rolled off the highs and the lows, but the vocal feels muddy again. It's not the vocal, it's the delay. So you can either use the delay settings if it has some sort of low frequency roll off, or just slap an EQ on it to clean up that low end. I think that I could have saved it if only I had enough time. Just a few simple words would have thrown it all back in line. Now, of course, we're listening in solo. You'll have to make sure that sounds good in the context of the mix. But you can literally, with a little bit of practice, you can do this quickly. In the amount of time it takes the singer to pack up her stuff, you can have a quick and dirty vocal mix done and ready to give to her. Now, to review, let's listen to the before and after. I think that I could have saved it if only I had enough time. I think that I could have saved it if only I had enough time. Just a few simple words would have thrown it all back in line. Sounds pretty good to me. Go try it on a mix and let me know how it works. By the way, if you like what you see here, you're gonna love my five-step mix guide. It's a free PDF that's available to you at fivestepmix.com, and it walks you through, just very briefly, my five-step process for mixing a song. Not a formula, but a way of thinking about the mix, so you know how to begin the mix, how to navigate all the decisions that need to be made, and how to know when you're finished. You can check that out for free at fivestepmix.com. Thanks for watching.